So to know about the crystallization, you please refer to our earlier video on solubility because it's the basics of crystallization. So let me read out for you. Solubility equilibrium is a type of dynamic equilibrium that exists when a chemical compound in the solid state is in chemical equilibrium with a solution of that compound. So that means I have a component solute. It is PBQ, which can dissociate into A and B, which is like this, okay? And then you can get a solubility product, KSP, which is nothing but A into B, root over P and Q. So this is your solubility product. So solubility product is a function of temperature when dissolution is endothermic, solubility increases with increasing of temperature. Common ion effect decreasing the solubility product. Okay. So in chemistry, thermodynamics activity, that is thermodynamic activity, thermodynamics activity denoted as A, okay, uh, is a measure of the effective concentration of a species in a mixture. For the gases, the activity is the effective partial pressure and usually referred as fugacity. Okay, this is for the gas, we use this term. When a substance exhibits concentration equals to Ksp, okay, it reaches to its saturation. So excess of Ksp, excess of Ksp value or concentration of solute exceed the value of equilibrium solubility concentration considered as super saturated solution okay so that's the very important understanding before we go for the crystallization so what is supersaturation when solubility the concentration of the product exceeding the amount the of solubility product okay supersaturation can be achieved at higher temperature upon uh, so that means the ksp is depend upon the temperature okay so if you temp increase the temperature ksp increases but the moment it reaches the supersaturation, if you decrease the temperature, Ksp also decreases. And so what happened? Uh, upon lowering the temperature, Ksp decreases. So excess solute rapidly separate as a crystals. Okay. And uh, this process is known as crystallization. And this same process can be, same concept can be used for recrystallization to uh, separate the, the pure substance from the impure products, impure um, interference okay um, so steps of crystallization the first step is nucleation the first step is nucleation then uh, it takes place from super saturated or super cooled solvent second step crystal growth which is exothermic spontaneous in nature delta G negative when crystals have two different structure being chemically same known as polymorphisms you have Oswald rule you have Oswald rule um, uh, which uh, is known as least stable polymorph having closest energy to highest stable one. Okay, crystallization occur due to freezing of saturated or less soluble solute, but uh, the soluble solute, but recrystallization need super saturation phenomena. So you have a equation Gibbs Thomson Gibbs Thomson equation. Okay. Uh, which correlate the solubility of particles and the radius of the particle radius okay supersaturation can be achieved through evaporation uh, so that's why for crystallization the yeah, attending the supersaturation is very important uh, which is given by the Myers theory of supersaturation what Myers theory says of supersaturation state that greater the degree of supersaturation rapid nucle the nucleation can be observed uh, at a very rapid speed okay that is your Myers supersaturation theory now coming to the next understanding the smallest geom now once you get the crystals okay the smallest geometric portion which repeats to build up the whole crystal is called as unit cell okay I have written the diagram of an unit cells over here uh, and uh, it determines the various crystal habit of an individual crystals 
minor indices minor indices okay um, which is denoted by H K and L denotes the planes orthogonal to the reciprocal uh, lattice vector now if you want to know the crystalline different shape of the crystal habit you must know this understanding of A B C the plane of crystals and the angle between them alpha beta and uh, gamma when it is 90 degree it known as cubic a crystal which is sodium chloride and zinc sulfate now uh, when it is a is equal to b not is equal to c okay and alpha beta gamma is equal to 90 it known as uh, uh, alpha beta gamma is equal to 90 yes is known as tetragonal crystal example sno2 tio2 titanium dioxide calcium sulfate okay then you have a not is equal to b not is not is equal to c and yet alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degree then known as orthorhombic crystals example sulfur barium, barium sulfate okay then you have a is equal to b is equal to c uh, alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma not is equal to 90 okay you know what here it is is equal to this kind of crystal known as uh, uh, rhombohedral crystal uh, calcite example okay then a not is equal to b not is equal to c alpha not is equal to beta not is equal to gamma not is equal to 90 degree this is known as triclinic crystals k2cr207 uh, potassium sulfate uh, 5h2 the example then you have a hexagonal a is equal to b is equal to b, a is equal to b b not is equal to c alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 gamma is equal to 120 degree it is hexagonal like your graphite zinc oxide silver iodide then you have monoclinic crystals a not is equal to b not is equal to c alpha is equal to gamma is equal to 90 beta not is equal to 90 example blobber salt that is na2so4 10h2o and even oxalic acid so now after knowing this crystal habit let us discuss the concept known as non-crystalline material is known as amorphous substance now normally amorphous exhibit the greater solubility than crystallines ok 